friends of all the whites that you could possibly collect. I think I have them all. <laughs> Which one is the best one for adding highlights on your mixed media projects? Well, that's what we're gonna find out. These are all the materials I'm gonna be testing today. We have your dry pencil varieties. We have our pastel art crayons. We have some paint pens. We have some uh, white, just regular pens. And then we have a collection of uh, very common sort of products for adding specific adding white highlights. So yeah, we have a lot to do today. Let's begin. All right, so I'm not gonna overthink this. We're just gonna go one at a time. I'm gonna start with my dry media and I'm gonna just try to be, I'm not gonna think too hard about pressure. I'm gonna do kind of average pressure. So it's, you know, fair. So this first product is uh, Jerry's Artorama. I have a Jerry's only 20 minutes from me. Um, so this is Jerry's Artorama. This is, um, it's just jumbo jet white. This is uh, oil based actually, um, jumbo. And um, it actually, it works pretty well uh, for larger dry media projects. And again, because we are all mixed media artists here, as you know, I don't think I need to explain this to you. You know, the sky's the limit as to what you can throw in your projects. So uh, it's good to know, this is a Prisma. It's good to know what our options are. And because again, we're mixed media artists, we have so many options. So going through my favorite ones. Oh, I have two Prisma colors, don't need that. This is a Stabilo All Pencil. It's actually meant to be activated with water. You can so do some fun things with that, but you can also just use it dry. This is a Stabilo. The black Stabilo All Pencil is my favorite. Um, is my favorite black to use for, you can activate it. It's so lush and yummy. So far, I'm not seeing any significant variations. This is a uh, USA Generals, which is actually behaves uh, like the Stabilo All does. You can activate this particular one. But again, you can also use these all dry. There's no reason you have to activate them. So if you have them around, let's test them out and see how they work. By the way, I kind of know the answers to this uh, comparison already, but it's really nice to kind of see, see them in action as well. This is a China marker. I use these a lot in my art school. Um, they're awesome on toned paper. Uh, construction workers, fun fact, actually use these. They come in just a couple of colors, maybe like six colors, um, because they write on everything. They write on literally glass, wood, anything. So construct, these are big in the construction field. And they also don't require a pencil sharpener because they have this peely system. All right, now we have a pit pastel, which we're, the ingredients are starting to change now. Um, and of course, pastels are less, um, you know, they can, they can blend and sort of fluff off because they're, they're chalky. So it's a little bit different, the, you know, especially very different from like the Jerry's. All right, as you can see, um, that's, ah, it's a tight race so far. Like there's no clear winners here yet. Uh, and this is a pastel. This is uh, by Conte, which is, whoa, super soft like super soft. The Pit Pastel is um, not as soft, actually. Uh, what's this? This is the Conte. But this is a lot bolder, actually. So, so far, the winners are the China Marker and this Conte, just because we are keeping score. That is actually very important. Um, how many more do I have? I just, I'm going to do one more. The other one was just another white color pencil. And then this is charcoal, which is not working well at all. <laughs> Does not want to go. Okay, so I think far as far as dry media, um, the China marker stands out a little bit more than all the rest. I knew that, that's why I use it so much. Um, and the Conte is actually in second place and the rest all look exactly the same to me. <laughs> so yeah, China Marker and the Conte. And again, that one was this one, this Conte à Paris, just so you know, pastel 
um, and I bought this individually. I don't think this was part of a set uh, at my local Jerry's. Yeah, so that was the winner of the dry mediums. Now let's go to other dry mediums, but these are in, um, these are more of like in an art crayon form. So let's do these next. So that would be uh, this collection of items right here. They're, they're not exactly equal, but they're kind of like the forms they take are sort of similar. So that's, oh, that's great. That's, that's awesome. All right, I have so much of this paper. I, I'm actually just gonna start a new one. Okay, so let's start with, this is a Caran d'Ache Neo Color 1. I actually just did a project where this was one of the fun, oh heck yeah, things that I used. So this is a Neo, whoa, so smooth. Oh, and I just realized I need to get a Neo Color 1 out here. Uh, Neo Color 2, let me go grab one. Awesome, of course I have, I have everything. <laughs> so this is a Neo Color 2. Now what's the difference between Neo Color 1 and Neo Color 2? They look identical, how crazy weird is that? So big, big difference actually is that the Neo Color 1 is a wax pastel um, and the Neo Color 2 is completely water soluble. So this is like watercolor when you activate it with water and this one will resist water. So very different products. But as far as white highlights are concerned, they look identical. So strange, right? So weird. Okay, so let's uh, keep on uh, going. Now this is an extra fine soft uh, pastel by Mungu. Um, soft pastel, so the chalk pastel to be clear, this is chalk. How do you spell chalk? Oh no, I'm like, I need to go smaller. All right, that is brighter to me already than these other ones. Uh, this is a Conte crayon, which is a sort of a compressed, this is a Conte crayon. Now remember we had this, we had the pencil form of this um, which won or tied with the China base, the China marker on the previous test. This is a semi-hard pastel. This is the semi-hard, which actually feels softer than the Conte, weirdly. That's, um, that's a little bit brighter, but these again are kind of all the same. And then this is uh, an oil pastel. which is a little bit, um, to me, it's actually a little bit brighter. I don't know how well the camera is picking this up. And then we have, this is a gelato. We might need to be done at the gelato because it's probably the same as this art crayon. Again, I'm running out of room. I bet you it is. Here, you know what I'll do? Okay, well, just before I do the art crayon, this, to me, this oil pastel and this, the semi-hard pastel are the winners. Um, I probably would use the oil pastel over the semi-hard because the oil pastels, the highlights are always your last layer. And oil pastels can sit on top of anything and they doesn't, it doesn't come off. You don't need a sealer like that is like glued on there. So um, here, I'll just do on this side, this kind of the application goes on a little bit differently. I don't know that it would be, it's, it's, um, these, these are by Marabou. It's an art crayon. These are, these and the gelatos are uh, water soluble. The application is actually just looks really different. Like the gelato, you can still see the texture of the paper. And these are, um, these are softer. So they kind of blend out better, but the white is not very white. This actually becomes more of like a gray. So I think here, now that I have a chance to kind of look at everything, I think the oil pastel is the winner. I'm trying to look in my camera to see if you can pick that up. Uh, these look very similar, but in real life, in person, this oil pastel is the winner. I'm glad I'm doing this comparison because I actually didn't realize that that would be the winner. So this is helping me out very, very well as well. <laughs> Okay, ah, so the next category is, uh, what is our next category? <laughs> oh, yes, we have, um, let's do these, this is like the pen category. 
this one should be interesting. I uh the Signo, the Signo um <laughs> the Uniball Signos are like used by everyone. I freaking hate them. I hate the jelly rolls. These are the worst in my humble opinion. Um and I don't know how people can use them. But I'm going to demo them anyways. I'm going to shut my mouth, pretend I didn't say that, and we're going to be very objective about this with no preconceived notions. All right, so here's, I mean, this is, can you see why these are annoying? This is the jelly roll. It doesn't even, ugh, okay, let's be like thoughtful about it. I hate these pens. Don't know how people use them. Oh, I'm getting crud all over my paper. Not good. All right, so anyways, I'm trying. This is the Jelly Roll. How do you spell this? Oh, I already spelled it wrong. Jelly Roll pen. Ugh. So if you can get these to work, God love ya. I can't do it. All right, this is the uh, Uniball Signals. I feel the same way about these pens. Um, I mean, come, come on. Come on. This is what this is uh, this is me genuinely during every mixed media project. I don't I see people using these all the time. And I I can't. I can't even get it to make a mark on the paper. I used to have tons. Like I bought like an 8-pack once cuz everyone was using them and I'm like, "Well, I need to have them. They're amazing." And I end up throwing them all out. I can't even get this to work at all. And now I'm not sorry that I I'm throwing this out as well. That's so stupid. I'm actually so mad about that. Just goes in the garbage. Um, this is a Recollections opaque marker. I, you can buy, buy the Recollections is like the Michaels store craft brand. Um, oi. <laughs> yeah, the pen, the wipes and the pens, it leaves a lot to be desired. All right, so this is the Recollections. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and throw that one away too. <laughs> okay. Um, this is, I saw a YouTuber, uh, play, uh, using this and I was like, I need that in my life. This is by, uh, Kiritake, who is, I have their watercolors are a great brand from Japan. Um, I have actually had zero luck using this, so I'm going to see if it works today. <laughs> You can like, oh, oh, okay. Maybe I wasn't working. I wasn't doing it right. Maybe this should be in the next category. Okay, so now, okay, so it was user error, I admit. So now it's working great. I'm going to see when it dries how opaque it is. So this is the Kiritake. And I like the, let's borrow some of that spill. Kiritake. Uh, maybe this should be in the paint marker category, actually. So we'll see how this looks when it is dry, if it's just as um, opaque. And what I actually will do is, why don't we start? I do think I have this in the wrong category. This could probably be in the paint category. That's just sort of like, it is like ink, but it's not, oh, that's something I haven't brought, brought out yet. All right, so I'm just gonna say fail to all the white pens, which again, I already knew that, but it's nice to like be able to prove, <laughs> prove uh, my preconceived notions by showing you that's, well, hello, that's the worst ever. Okay, so now we'll start a sheet for paint. These are ink or, acrylic based um, tools, let's say, that, you know, can help you with your highlights. So again, oh sorry, I'll do this really quick. So I just did it on the other piece of paper. Sorry, cure, re, how do you spell that? Ta, okay. Okay, and this is the pen, sort of, whatever this is called. At least I know how it works now. Always an upside to these demos. Okay, this is a fun, that my husband got me this for Christmas and this, my husband knows nothing about anything art and he randomly got this and it's my favorite. Like, go Sean. This is a similar application. It's like a little nail polish applicator. So this is, and I use this all the time. So actually we can also note the differences in the applicator. So this is essentially probably very similar uh, inside product, but the applicator is what makes it so different. So this is for teeny tiny details. So this is the Copic. 
and I have a couple Copic. This is the Copic, um, we'll put nail polish so we can remember. It's probably the same ink as that I'm about to <laughs> do. This is our nail polish. So Copic also makes this product, which is probably the exact uh, same is my guess, but it's worth taking a look at. Again, this was recommended by one of my YouTubers. The only thing that's weird is that it's, it's like super dried. I actually think I need to maybe mix this. I need to like almost reconstitute it. Um, it's really very firm in there. So I've just added a little water because it was like, it's almost dried up. Um, so this, but it is seriously like no joke. This is the Copic for highlights. This is the Copic kind of jar. So again, application is different. And then this is a really expensive product. This is like $25 for this little jar. And this guy is much cheaper. It's probably half that price. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. Uh, and all of these are in my uh, Amazon shop links you can find in the description box. But um, this one is much less expensive. My friend, and it's almost the same exact product. Doesn't it look identical? It looks identical. Uh, this just looks creamier because I just added a wet paintbrush to it. But um, at the price point, I would use this one over the other one. But then this too is like, it's like almost completely dried out and I have to use, I swear to God, it's like the same exact thing. I have to use a little water to get it going. And it covers pretty much identically. So this is Dr. P.H. Martins. But even you can tell that actually goes on better even slightly wet than uh, the first one. And then the only other true paint I'm trying is gouache because people use gouache, um, like, uh, it, again, like all of these products, you add them at the very end for highlights. Um, and now there's traditional gouache and then there is acrylic gouache. And there is a difference in the formulation. So this is gouache, this is acrylic gouache. But if you're using watercolors, you can use traditional gouache or acrylic, acrylic gouache to activate. And you can see my, I just did a comparison on gouaches. Um, so I will link that up in the description box. You can, um, so you can learn more about the differences of all those gouaches. All right. So obviously in this category, um, I was going to say, I only have three more markers. We'll do that on a separate page. So in this category, if I zoom out, whew, this is a tough call. I, you know what I'll do is I'm going to wait, the, let those dry, and then we will assess what, what they look like when this is dry. It's hard to tell when they're all still wet, but the very last category, and there's not that many, and actually they should probably go on this sheet back with our pens, our lame pens, <clears throat> I'm so mad, is we have uh, three more markers. We have two paint paint markers, and then we have this pit pen. So yeah, these definitely fall in the same category. These are more like pens than paint brushes. So let's check out these. All right, three left, and then we can assess, do like a final winner. This is a pit pen by Faber Pastel. This is one of my favorite drawing tools in all their colors. The big barrels have been discontinued, except there is a gift pack that you can purchase. I use this, I never use this dry on paper. I actually always use these in my mixed media uh, projects and I use them especially in my, um, over in my hamburger system, which if you don't know my hamburger system, what? You have some catching up to do here on YouTube, but these are the steps of my hamburger system and all these videos, there's actually dedicated videos on each step of this. Um, right here, layer five paint markers, 
These pit pens are everything. They work amazing over like a sealant layer. You can actually like literally paint with them. I love them so much. But as you can see, their opacity isn't that awesome on black paper, but I do have to tell you it, it's pretty awesome when you use them over a sealer. But that's all right, this is a true opacity test. So sorry, sorry pit pens. You might not be the winner here. Okay, this is a very well used Sharpie marker. <laughs> So this is a Sharpie and this is a water base. Ooh, um, I actually do have the oil base ones. There's two kinds. The oil base has a pink end. I actually only use the water based. And then the last but not least, we have uh, Posca pens, which are my other favorite ones. Thin. And they, these come in a ton of different mid, nibs. This just happens to be this one. Um, okay, so let's have like a final judgment, shall we, of everything. My paints have had a chance to dry. So we can finally compare all of them. Like what's the final verdict of everything? So if I have all of these together, I can't believe how many products I have. That's like embarrassing. Um, woo! You can see the ones that really jump out, out, uh, jump out at you. Actually, that Kiritake, the one that I just figured out to use, <laughs> this guy um, is winning in the like pen, the pen category, the pen paint marker category is the clear winner. That's very cool because it's basically one of these but in a pen form. So good job, Kiritake. And now I know how to use it better. So yay for everyone. Uh, worst, the loser was the, was the uh, this, the Uniball Sigma Pen. Terrible, terrible. It wouldn't even show up for the contest. Jeez Louise. Again, out of the dry media, we have the oil pastel. This is a close race though. Like they're almost all look the same, but you can tell this is, this is just by a little teeny weeny. The oil pastel is the winner there. Which is hard because it doesn't make little, like you can only make big marks with it, but that's also why you have your pen choices so you can kind of get into the details. For the wet contest, <laughs> wet t-shirt, no, your wet contest, I think that these are pretty much the same, but at the price point is huge. Like this is literally double the price of this one, so I would choose the Dr. Page Martins all day long. That really works, uh, followed by the gouache. Now it's funny because the Kiritake was the clear winner out of the paint markers and paint pens, but on this sheet, it's not, right? It's really not. So um, so again, this the, the Dr. Page Martins is the winner. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's even, I guess the gouache is very, is very comparable, but these might be more appearing more opaque because the marks are wider, so it might look brighter. Um, these, while I'm looking at this in person, um, I'm really trying to look at the actual opacity, like how much of the paper can I see coming through? And these are very similar pretty much all of these. And again, this might appear not as opaque just because the lines are so thin. So my guess is in reality, these are all kind of the same, but no, I do see more of the black paper through the Karatake. So yeah, I do think that, that the Dr. Page Martin really is the best. Gouache, this one was, the, was my first stroke, does have the same opacity as these other two. So perhaps these three are in a tie, but again, um, no, but see, look at this one. See if you can see through it. And that was not, that was not diluted with any water either. So yeah, I'm going to say, sorry, I'm really taking this very seriously. I realize, <laughs> but the Dr. Page Martin, I'm going to give them the blue, the blue ribbon for that. So, wow, this was super actually illuminating. I'm very surprised by the the Posca pen and Sharpies that they they couldn't compete as well as I, as I thought that they as I thought that they would since I use those probably most frequently of all, so I will from now on um, be relying more heavily on this this guy to make my white highlights. Um, yeah, I hope you learned tons and tons. Yes, awesome. Well, now you know. 
Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with another awesome video. Bye. Tippy, you missed it. I just finished. I just finished the whole comparison. Where were you, girlfriend? No murdering today? Are you feeling less murdery? Oh, maybe a little murdery? Don't. Oh, that's not nice.